Okay, so welcome everyone to this um, preparing to study session. Uh, very nice to have your company here. I'm glad you're attending the open day. And I guess if you are looking at this particular subject, then you are seriously thinking of engaging in some of the courses the department has to offer. Um, so you may be um, already engaged in courses here or elsewhere, or you may be thinking of returning to study for the first time uh, or for a long time since you've interrupted your studies. And I think it's a very good thing that the department has uh, scheduled one of uh, a, a session on this topic because my own personal expression for entering higher levels of education was that you have the subjects, you have the information, you have requirements of the course, and you're just thrown in at the deep end and expect to somehow or other know how to process the information and to produce some sort of analysis yourself. And I think uh, increasingly I've thought that, that as well as the academic subject, studying itself is very much a skill. And I think one of the outcomes of education is not just informing yourself about particular subjects which interest you, but also learning new skills. And I think it's very important to approach it in that way, thinking I'm doing actually two things. I'm approaching new subjects, new information, and I'm actually learning new skills. And having spent a bit of a while going through the educational process myself, I'm a product of the continuing education process that took me through to a doctorate level. And also having looked at the educational process as a teacher, uh, I think it's very important to regard yourself as someone who needs to hone your own skills in the way that works for you. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all. Um, I'm very taken with one particular educational theorist who talks about multiple intelligences. The idea that psychologically, in terms of personality, we all have different ways of engaging with the world. So we may be very logical, um, systematic people, we may be rather more creative in our thinking. Uh, we may work best with visual information. We may work best with oral information. Um, there are different ways in which we all learn. So I think whilst you are learning those skills, it's important to think, what sort of a person am I? How do I engage with the world? And what works best for me? Because you can be banging your head against a brick wall thinking, this is not working for me, this is not working for me. And maybe you need to be approaching the information, the material, in a different way. So it's a process of learning about yourself and who you are, I think, in learning these skills. So there's my little clicker stick. Um, oh, that will do, I think. Um, so preparing to study, it is about skills. Uh, it's also a logistical exercise. It's about management of your time. It's about certain techniques, such as taking in information in different ways. Uh, it's about ways in which you approach the information, the research material. And it's also significantly about writing. And I'll come on and talk a bit more about that in due course, cover these different areas. As I've already said, it's about who you are, so it's on building on existing skills. In continuing education, one of the delights is working with people, nothing against undergraduates, um, but at a certain level of life, you're building up more and more experience. So I will have someone who's been in engineering who will approach their learning in one way, and another person who has been a creative artist who will approach learning in another way, and someone who has brought up a family who will approach learning in a different way. So it's saying, what skills have I got that I can bring to this process? And you'd be surprised how relevant those skills might be. 
for example, someone who's brought up a family is probably incredibly good at dealing with several jobs at the same time, but the accountant has great difficulty in handling two jobs at the same time because they're so linear. Uh, so build on existing skills and then develop new skills. And the aim ultimately, the ultimate aim, I think, of education is to develop your own critical voice. So to develop a, a facility in which you can uh, take in information, you can assess and process it in a meaningful way, and have that ability. Sorry, I'm late. Did you? Okay, I'll take a seat. Um, so I'm not far in, so sorry. Just, uh, this is the first slide, so just um, uh, basically I'm saying that uh, the process of learning is a skill which you need to develop, um, but it's also personal to you. Okay? So developing that critical voice is the ultimate aim. Sorry, I'm going wrong. Um, so the question is. What kind of a course are you going to pursue? What uh, course do you want to follow? What do you want to achieve? Um, are you a new or returning learner? Um, and is your learning exploratory or focused in one particular area? And this will have some implication on the way in which you develop your study skills. Uh, you might come into continuing education and think I'm going to try quite a lot of uh, uh, sample uh, classes in different areas. And you will find that in different subjects, there are different approaches to the evidence of the material. So you'll be learning a number of different ways of interpreting material. Um, if you're focusing on one particular specialised area, then you'll be learning rather more specialised skills. Um, incidentally, um, in these sessions, uh, we normally have a little period at the end for questions. So uh, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. But if there's something you feel is particularly pertinent, something I'm saying at a particular time, please do raise your hand so that we can deal with it. Just briefly, and I suspect you've looked at the information, uh, there are a range of format options uh, in continuing uh, education. The online courses, which is an uh, easy way of getting into uh, lifelong learning, you can do it from home. It's a limited duration. There's a wide range of courses. Um, there are face-to-face -face courses, uh, weekly classes and weekend courses, usually held here, and at different academic levels. Uh, those which are not uh, credit, they're not uh, awarded um, uh, academic credit. Those which are foundation and undergraduate certificates, diplomas, advanced diplomas, pre-masters, graduate certificates and diplomas, masters and doctoral work. And there is also a wide range of courses on continuing professional development. So a wide range of courses, I imagine that you will be approached, many of you will be interested in, in uh, many different areas of what continuing education the department has to offer. And so the type of skills you need to develop will vary according to the level of academic um, uh, sophistication, uh, complexity of the course. But having said that studying is developing your own set of skills, um, what is, I think, really good about the continuing education department is you can come in at one level and then you can chart a progression. And during that progression, you will be developing your own skills. Um, so the department offers an option of studying which is focused but is also flexible. So, study skills. Well, the first one I would mention is motivation. Lifelong learning is not necessarily the easiest way to study. You're not a student who takes three years out and goes to college and has that as the sole consideration. Um, you've been motivated to come here and attend the Open Day. Um, I think uh, when you engage in a course of learning, um, 
you obviously need to consider, first of all, your interest in the subject, but secondly, the extent to which you will be able to dedicate time and attention to that topic. Um, that might sound like an obvious thing to say, but I think in particular in lifelong learning, and I teach on a number of courses with a number of mature students, life comes up and intervenes and um, causes distractions. Sometimes they're predictable, quite often they're not predictable. So you need to have a realistic appreciation of circumstances. So that's a very basic one. and. Um, uh, I think it's worth mentioning, though, that the motivation is important. And then time and organisation. Now, at different levels of courses, we expect students to invest a certain amount of time every week in those courses. If it was a uh, weekly course, uh, an online course delivered in weekly modules or one of the weekly classes, then obviously you would attend those. And they carry, they are, there is a, a, an expectation in those courses of some written work of your own, which would involve a number of hours of research, reading, and a number of hours of writing. But if you get onto the award-bearing courses, then the expectation of the time that you would spend increases to looking to something like 15 to 20 hours a week as a normal commitment. And as with everything else in life, you get out what you put in. So the more you, time you can put in, the better. Um, and whether your attendance on the course is going to be easy or challenging. So um, you, you may be uh, near to Oxford and find it easy to attend, or it might be a rather more challenging um, exercise. So moving on to the actual practice of studying, either online or in the classroom, um, you will have a lecturer who will deliver a, a session with information, nearly always using PowerPoint as a teaching aid, and also speaking as I'm speaking. And the question then comes, well, what am I going to record of this information and how am I going to record it? And I think that is a difficult consideration because you will get a lot of stuff coming at you. And you want to assimilate that. Now, the way in which we Assimilate information, I think, takes place on two levels. First of all, there is the mental reception, the concentration. Hopefully, you will have a lecturer who will deliver clearly and articulate their ideas in a very clear way that's easy to comprehend and will actually emphasize the main points. So you will take away the main points. And then there is the detail. And the extent to which you record detail, I think, is part of the comprehension. And I'm in a way, speaking personally here and going to lectures and so forth. A lot of information coming at you, you want to walk away with it, the essentials. I mean, sometimes myself, I go to lectures and I'll say to a friend, that was an excellent lecture, and they'll say, what was it about? And I'll think, uh, I can't actually remember, but I know it was very good. And so I've been very engaged with it, but I haven't actually taken in the essentials. So my own personal approach to this business of receiving, assimilating the information is to try and pick out what is pertinent and essential. Now the lecturer will be delivering certain points which they feel are important. When I talked about the learning journey being a personal one, you may also find points within that <coughs> delivery, within that session, which relate to what you find interesting. This sounds as though you're digressing and you're going off in a different direction. But learning is very much a case of assimilating information into a previous structure of knowledge within your mind. You know when you, someone's talking to you, and they're talking to you about something which you're interested in, it's pretty easy to remember 
the stuff they're telling you. Because your mind is going, oh, that fits in there, that fits in there, that fits in there. Oh, that's a nice connection <coughs> between that and that. Someone then starts to talk to you about something which is way off your radar. It's really difficult to hold that information. So I'm arguing in the case of learning to know about the way in which your mind is receptive to this information and try and find ways in which you can fit it into your previous experience and knowledge. So it might mean that two people go to a lecture and they come away with rather different elements of the lecture. So it might be, say, it's a history of art lecture or maybe it's a history lecture. And one person will come away with very clear memory of the images. Someone else will come away with a memory of the quotes. That doesn't necessarily matter, because as long as that information is being built up into a picture of that particular subject, I think you are then assimilating the knowledge. And you're also learning about the way in which you best receive knowledge and retain it. So I don't think I'm alone in this and thinking, when you're learning, there's a lot of stuff to memorize and take in. And the frustrating thing is when you don't hold it. Um, so I'm suggesting that there are ways in which you can be friendly to yourself and make it easier for yourself to assimilate knowledge. So refining the essential information. Take down what you feel is going to be the helpful, the helpful points in a particular session. And then we come on to the process of reading, of research. You'll be asked to do some written work, and that will mean going to resources. That's a logistical exercise. Your tutor will point you towards certain sources. They may be online. Say it's an online course. You'll be pointed to certain um, passages to read. Um, but they may well be books. And so it's a question of using the excellent library in the department. Uh, librarians are fantastically friendly down there and helpful. Um, if you're doing a wall bearing courses, you'll also have the uh, access to the full Bodleian, the university library system. So that will be a question of learning how that system works and how you can get the best out of it, which in a way is another topic which will be you would be helped with when you engage in that course. So we have online resources, we have the libraries, the use of the library, uh, and there are, there's, there's a whole structure of um, learning assistance, both in terms of people that you can approach, and in terms of, um, that there's an online course in um, study techniques which you could uh, take as a pre pre preparation to further study. Um, there are pamphlets. If you do a weekly class, you will get a pamphlet, which is about research techniques and writing. So there's a lot of support in terms of um, information provided. And you've also got a tutor. And I think it's fair to say that the tutors are very happy to help you in your study. So go to them personally and say, look, I want to do this subject for my essay, say, for a class, but I'm not sure entirely how to approach it or what books and resources I should use. And, and so use that connection with the, the, with the tutor in order to get the best result, uh, approach it in the most meaningful way. And since we're looking at education at what we, a higher uh, educational level, I think also it's fair to say that in many of the subjects, there's a degree of exploration of your own perspectives which you will be encouraged to develop. So it's not only about you responding to the tutor and the way in which they suggest certain aspects, but it's you developing your own fresh perspectives. That's the ultimate aim that we have, is that you develop your ability to look at subjects and analyze them for yourself. So, when you're talking about assignments, um, think about fresh ways, fresh arguments, that uh, uh, aspects you could bring to a subject. And the assignments themselves are creative activities. Um, part of my remit, I teach history of design, history of art, um, 
And uh, I teach in another institution in Oxford, excellent centre where they teach people to design and make furniture. So I've got all these people who say, oh, I hate writing, absolutely hate writing, I don't want to do it. And I say to them, actually, your essays are just as much a creative activity as when you make a chair or a chest of drawers and so forth. Because you are putting together, you're taking different elements and you're bringing them together and you're selecting different parts that you think work together, that you can fit together. And then you are creating an argument to address a particular problem. There's the term narrative which is used sometimes in terms of academic writing. The narrative that you present. And when I first heard that, I thought, narrative? That's stories. That's not academic writing at all. And yet, if you think about it, when you have a particular problem to address, this could be a mathematical formula, it could be a scientific formula, but you are presenting a story. It's about creating a narrative which the listener, the reader, will understand, and you take them through, and you show them how the different bits of element uh, evidence relate in order to present a particular perspective. So, as well as all the aspects of drawing in the information and doing it in a selective and useful way, you are also constructing an argument as a creative work. And again, that is a skill. It's a great skill to develop because as you develop that skill, arguably it produces a clarity of thinking which is a very useful aspect of life. In fact, it's part of the whole justification often for higher education is that someone does a degree in history and then they go off to work in an institution. They never use that history again, but they are reckoned to have a very good mind which will process that information that they're working on. So look on the assignment writing as a way of developing a skill of clarity of thought, of constructing a narrative and argument. Uh, and I think approach like that, that then becomes another satisfying task that, or skill that you can acquire. Um, there are then the logistical aspects such as the timekeeping, which really comes into the time and organisation again. The courses do run according to schedules, according to requirements of doing things at certain times. So that's important to uh, use that and make use, as I've said, of the assistance, of the various handouts which are there, online information and in person. And if you have particular requirements, if you have requirements of uh, difficulties of study of one way or another, there is a Department of Student Support, and I can give you the uh, email of Louisa, who works in that, uh, and she is more than willing, very happy, to respond to any queries that you might have about personal circumstances which might interfere with your ability to study. So, uh, it is a question, as I said, of trying to pursue this entire process in order to develop your own critical voice. Um, and then, in terms of study, the question of, going back to the question of what it is you want to study and where you want it to take you. So, your study may be one-off, it might be a particular course in one particular area, but given the facilities and the breadth of um, options which were available in this department, you might like to think of, okay, I'm going to go to an online course and then I'll move on to a weekly course and then I might consider something which is award-bearing and so forth. Um, so, um, I think that's my, my last slide and uh, I hope I have covered some useful aspects but I anticipated that there might be questions which you wanted to ask about your own particular study process. So are there any questions you would like to bring up? Topics of interest which uh, could be useful for other people to share as well. 
Um, yeah. when, um, when people talk about how best they study, mm. uh, I came across a very interesting concept that people are able to manage different things. You know, like if, if you've got to write, say, four things in one week yeah. or whatever, how do you cook? Now, are you a one-pan person, yeah. or can you manage the, the, you know, the, the oven, the stove, you know, the fire, yeah. the three, three different things at once? Yeah. If you are a one-pan person, you're a one, one essay a week person, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or one essay at a time person, yeah. Yeah. and that seems to actually be quite true. That yeah. The way that you cook yeah. represents how you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. yes, and we all live lives, and we all have ways of dealing with life, and I think that's a really. Mm. really pertinent point mm. is that we have different ways of approaching mm. a task. Mm. So certainly from the point of view of someone who's delivering mm. courses, I never think that all of the students are going to work in exactly the same way. And mm. I think I'd be very bad at my mm. job if I did. Mm. Everyone is an individual. And the most effective way of developing that those learning skills is to look at yourself as an individual and see how you can develop your own learning pathway. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Any other points or questions? In, in researching for an essay, what about use of um, software tools for assisting that cl collation of data? And Absolutely. Well, there are there are packages which are available for that. Uh, yeah, the assembly of research data and referencing. So. Um, an important part of academic writing is the referencing process, and that's something which very often is rather intimidating to people. <coughs> I think I can't just go to a book and get out uh, information, pictures, whatever, and put them in the essay. I've got to reference them. And the referencing systems, there are different referencing systems. Um, uh, some of them are more centered on writing for the humanities, um, in this country, particularly Oxford, others have come from the United States, different ways of doing things. And at first sight, it looks like an intimidating process. But I'm, sorry, I'm digressing slightly, but, but, um, but the referencing is simply a way of saying, I got this information from here, it was, came from that source. It used to always be a book, sometimes it's an online uh, site. Um, and so you have got all of this information which you've taken out of a book or a website or an online journal and you're going to put that little bit in to your essay in order to justify your argument. You can end up with an awful lot of information floating around and difficult to control. Now, um, uh, coming back to what you said about different ways of doing things, some of you might I, I guess nowadays very often use uh, word processing on the computer to assimilate your information. You might go to a library and have a laptop and put stuff in straight into the computer. Other people do it by hand, that's fine. Um, but the way in which the computer does offer uh, very um, effective ways of taking the information where you can make notes uh, of the sources from which you drew the information and when you write your essay it will automatically create a reference of the right format and put a note into your list of sources at the back of the essay, the, the bibliography. So EndNote is one which uh, comes to mind uh, and those are the sort of resources which are to be found in information put online by the department and also in hard copy pamphlets which you can pick up when you start studying. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I think there are, what you're effectively saying is there are <coughs> aids, tools out there to help you deal with that particular aspect. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. In the slightly linked, you know, talked you about ref putting referencing here. Um, one of the things I've definitely put out is when when something actually does require referencing and when it doesn't, where, where, is it, where is it a general thing which is more common than across mm -hmm. some particular, from a particular book uh, and yeah. when you actually need to, need to refer to it? Well, I think it, in terms of referencing, I think the question you always need to ask yourself is, 
if the reader wanted to establish where this information came from, what information do they need? So if it is a general idea which is to be found in a, a work, then just simply referring to the author and their work will be sufficient. I'll take as an example, um, uh, someone called Edward Said wrote a book called Orientalism, which was arguing that the West has looked at the Near East and has said, oh, that's your culture, and has kind of made it their own. So you can say that's about cultural appropriation, Said uh, Orientalism. If there is something in the book where he expresses a particular set of opinions over a few pages, then you might put that it comes from that book and it is pages 35 to 36. If you choose some words which he has written in the book as part of your argument, as Saeed said, dot, 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 then you would need to quote that exact reference so that anyone reading it could say, hmm, really? I'll go and have a look at that and just check that that's actually what he said. So it's those different levels of referencing. So it could be more general about the general opinions of someone, um, or it might be very, very specific. I think when you get then to a whole set of ideas that you might have about a particular topic, so you could say, let's choose another example, about buildings and the way in which buildings were built out of traditional materials, and that at a particular time they start to be made out of industrially produced materials. It might be your general impression that in a particular period of time there's that transition, and you've drawn it from lots of different sources. So you might mention some of those sources in general, but actually it's part of your argument. I'm arguing that and probably wouldn't expect to find specific references to everyone saying that. So I think it's the degree to which you are arguing a point. It's where you are choosing evidence to support your argument that you need to bring in the specific references. It's, I always think that writing an essay is an assignment is rather like a court of law. So the barrister gets up and they say, well, um, my client maintains that he was in the bar at 10 p.m. Um, and that he only had one glass of scotch. And so the, the other um, a, a barrister or the judge will say, okay, what's your evidence for that? Um, if the barrister gets up and says, my client is someone of excellent character and would never hurt a fly, that's something you're not actually going to reference because that becomes more of an argument about their general character. So it, it, is a tricky, it is a tricky matter doing this writing. I don't know how many of you are thinking of studying in areas where you will write essays. There are also technical scientific courses where you do uh, assignments, but they're of a rather different nature. Well, I think if you think about the, 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 the law court analogy and say, if I say that, um, let, let, let's, let's sort of widen it out. So um, you, you've got someone who gets into a fight in, in town, um, and, and they're up in court for that. And, and you argue that the town is very crowded. Oh, he just bumped into it. The, crowd's, the town's very crowded. Um, that's just, yeah, that's an observation. You wouldn't expect to have specific evidence. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost as though it's, you're asserting something which um, is, is uh, fairly arguable. Mm -hmm. um, but if you then say, oh, but he actually walked across the pavement mm -hmm. and intentionally collided with this person, then you would want witnesses to say, yeah, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that. So in an academic level, you are making an argument about some particular principle, 
and you will support it with evidence, and you might construct a paragraph where you say, I am going to argue X, Y, and Z, and then you bring in other people. You might bring in your own evidence. You say, I am observing this here. So we have the different levels of primary and secondary evidence. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? So the primary evidence is the evidence which is out there which you observe and analyze. Mm -hmm. So you say, I have looked at this particular area and I'm <coughs> taking these particular instances to argue my point. And then here's someone who's made a study of this and they've written a book or they've written a journal or something. And I'm going to take <coughs> their opinions to support my arguments. And the complexity of academic writing is that sometimes you will have someone who's looked at this area of primary evidence and has come up with an opinion, and you say, actually, do you know what? I think they're wrong, or they're partly wrong. I think they're partly right, partly wrong, and that's where you build your complexity into your argument. And you come up with a nice essay which covers the different aspects of the subject. I think it's important to emphasize also in uh, a higher level of academic study. The expectation is not that you will simply say, I'm looking at this particular area and I've read everything about it and here's the information. But that you're developing your own ideas about it, your own <coughs> perspectives. And the further you get up the academic um, ladder, if you like, the more it is that expectation that you are going to use your own critical eyes, your critical voice to, to interpret things. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was studying, I had a seminar with a robber, sort of eminent historian in, in the university. I thought, oh, I've got to work really hard now. I've used this great big fat essay, read lots of information, I've read all the books. So I was really pleased, and it was the first essay. I handed it in to him, and he held up this wad of paper and he tapped it and he said, I know all this stuff, Tony. Um, what do you think? And I always remember that because that really stuck in my mind. What do you think? What is your opinion? What is your argument? Your perspective on this? Um, yeah, sorry. It was no, what, what I was going to say is it, it, it's, it's equally important to, to find people who disagree with what you think. Yeah. as well as the people who support your argument. Absolutely. And then you've got to have an evaluation process of, well, this person's more eminent, this article is from 1979, this is from last year, yeah. and weighing up the, uh, the weight of the people who are writing the, the information. Um, it, you may even find that you've got to take the side of somebody who's less eminent mm -hmm. than the, you know, the kind of expect the world well, Absolutely, expert. absolutely. And academic knowledge is always moving on and developing. Mm -hmm. That's the exciting thing about um, this, 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 this whole business of mm -hmm. studying and inquiry. It's not static. And I would really hope that my fellow tutors, if you were in a class and they presented an argument, that you would feel confident enough to say, um, I'm not entirely sure that I see it that way. I'm looking at it a bit differently. They would then expect you to argue your point, mm -hmm. not just simply to say, mm, I mean, you're right, I think. But it is about an ongoing process. All of that academic writing, all of that stuff in the libraries is people saying, I see it that way. Well, yeah, I think, I think you're partly right, but actually I see it that way. And, and so the whole business of academic writing, including your own, is building up that knowledge all the time in terms of refining the way in which we look at things. Yeah, I faced this kind of, this kind of situation it was my first lesson, and it was a kind of question. And uh, I answered this question. Uh, because, for example, Thompson, I said, I said, I said, and said, why do you think that's right? Because Thompson said. But yeah. this, the other person said another thing, why uh, I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about, uh, I was maybe brought up that if someone tells something, it's right, it's right, so no other opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was kind of maybe culture shock, as I said, yeah. 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 or something like that. I was, I was thinking, oh my god, I should think about that. Absolutely. And yes. Like, like yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that that is particularly true of the the academic culture of the university of the department, a, a, a Socratic as it's called, a, a, a way of arguing one position against another. So don't be afraid to express your opinions, your ideas. Test yourself to see whether you can justify them. 
Um, don't be afraid or worried if the tutor or other people come back and say, well, actually, I think you're wrong. It's, it's when you, um, that, that is a whole process of exploration, of developing your own perspectives. I think you had have, you have a, a point or a question. You yeah, have. just generally about academic writing, because yes. I've written a few assignments, and, and yeah. you're right, the tutors come back and they say, you, know, you, you haven't fully uh, explored that avenue. And yeah. Come, so you know, I found that extremely helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I'm looking for is maybe some examples where, um, in reasonably short essays like we write 15, 15 in the words, yeah. where um, you can say, well, they have proved the point. This is a good essay, and yeah. this is a bad essay. This yeah. is this is yeah. um, without getting. I, I'm sure there are massive tones out there which go into academic writing, um, but I'm looking for specifically. Arguing that point, um, where it, I agree with what you say, that they're looking for what you want to say, or I want to yes. say. Um, but you've got to back it up with various, I've written one in through archaeology, where yes. certain of it is a fact, yes. and a lot of it is assumption, yes. and actually going into it. Um, no. And I came up with an assumption, well, I came up with what I thought, and the guy came back to me and said, uh, what I'm learning to try and what I'm trying to do is to find something that when you're saying go to the courtroom and have a look and see what your mm. essay said. Okay, what well, the other thing is that you can submit uh, preliminaries to a lot of the tutors who will look, look yes. at it first and yes. say, listen, you haven't read it, and let's go back and have a look at it. Yes. Uh, as long as you do it in plenty of time. Yes, absolutely. But I'm looking to try and improve myself mm. before I actually submit the first draft, if they don't to do it. Well, I think it is. You, you've got a topic, you, you're doing archaeology. And I'm not too sure what I am. Yeah, but archaeology yeah. is a, a highly interpretive exercise mm. um, where you dig in the ground and you bring out stuff and you think, hmm. Yeah, we've got, we've got the bits of pottery in our hands, but what on earth does this mean about the way that these people live and their values and so forth? So you're putting layers of interpretation on top. And mm. archaeologists, um, I did my doctoral research in archaeology, and they're endlessly arguing about what things mean and how you can read them and so forth. So it's always moving from one place to another. It's always moving from one particular philosophical place to another. So one moment they're saying it's all about the material culture, another moment they're saying it's all about ideology um, is life. So it's a, it's a fluid field. But you're saying, I've got a subject and I want to present a really good essay. Mm. So as you say, you, you, you look at that particular um, area of discussion and I think a very important part is the question which you formulate now in many of the courses that we run we say to people here's the general area you can select a topic related to that general area so you select the topic and then what is your question what are you trying to answer not just about maybe a survey where you say I'm going to look at um, some elements of Iron Age Britain and describe them. But beyond that, what is the question about that which you wish to answer? So quite critical in terms of writing is the term is the, is the business of thinking about the argument that you're trying to make and then constructing an effective framework by which to ar to argue it. And I think one of the problems of academic writing and of life in general, is that there are lots of different things out there which relate to each other in various ways. Um, uh, so information is not presented or not found in a nice linear fashion. So if I take an analogy, it might be the whole process of living and working. But that involves things like geography, it, it involves things like modes of transportation, it involves social relationships, it involves economics. So putting together an idea of how do we deal with living and working is a very, very complex matter. But when you write an assignment, you're trying to put this together in a linear argument. There is a way of assembling information which is called mind mapping, where you actually construct a 
two-dimensional diagram trying to relate these things to each other in a, a map form. But when you come to put together your argument, you've actually got to take those different elements and you've got to put them together in a coherent way. So taking, coming back to your problem, you've got a subject, you've got an, a particular interest in it, uh, <coughs> you need really to say, I'm going to address this, I'm going to answer that question. Now, as others have said, it may not be actually a nice, neat answer to the question. It might be, well, I'm persuaded towards that particular argument, but I'm also going to present counter-arguments which say there might be some flaws with that. So you construct in such a way that you, you introduce the argument you're going to make, and then you go through the various elements of it, and then, of course, draw it together at the end of the conclusion. And in terms of the logistics of these classes, as you say, go to the tutor, take your essay plan, put out some bullet points and say, I want to deal with that subject, I'm thinking of approaching it in this way with that evidence, and I'm going to make this argument. Probably only three or four lines of bullet points. I'm going to deal with this, then this, then this. And the tutor will then say, um, yeah, okay, fine, but have you thought about that or that? And so... I think you're absolutely right. It is a very good exercise to go to the tutors before you actually get seriously engaged in the writing and um, the writing and the research, so that that's more directed. But don't be surprised if, after you've put together the evidence and you're halfway through the essay, you think, "Actually, do you know what? I don't think it's about that after all. The evidence is pointing me in another direction, and I think it's about something else." So that's uh, I've kind of gone into the actual nuts and bolts of things like referencing, and but I, I don't know if that those that this discussion is does it touch some of the points you're interested in? It's a skill. Online thing about I know it was uh, this department from Oxford University about referencing. Mm -hmm. I found that extremely useful. It yes. tells you how to do it. Exactly. Why. Yeah. So it's one of those aspects which, if you're not used to that level of referencing can seem intimidating, but once you get used to the, the way of doing it, and as you mentioned, there are um, online packages which help to, to, to make it an almost automatic system. Um, so, it, there are so many different as, aspects to study. I, I've talked about being selective in your, your uh, assimilation, assimilation of knowledge, um, Work out what you need to know, what you need to learn, what works for you to build up a, uh, a knowledge, uh, a skill, if you like, of your particular subject. And work with the facilities which are there, the tutors, work with the online resources, work with the facilities like the library, librarians, um, and of course, other students. Because most of our learning contexts are ones where you are in a group with other people. And one of the great aspects of continuing education, don't know to what extent you're new to this or returning to continuing education, one of the aspects which I find almost invariably in the courses, weekly classes through to two year master's courses, is that when they come to the end, the students are saying, oh, so sorry it's coming to an end because I've enjoyed it, but also I've developed these fabulous relationships with other people, shared interests, where you talk about the subject, share ideas, share resources, um, and that's a great aspect of studying in this context. Yeah. Any other points? It's a little bit of a pot pourri, this discussion about different elements, but um, other concerns, considerations? You mentioned that there is a course on um, on basically learning how to yeah. how to study. There's An online course on study skills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it only online? Uh, well, th th there is also a booklet. Are you going to do weekly classes? <laughs> that I haven't decided. But it, a, just every, learning every, how to to do the assignments. Basically. Every course will come with a little pamphlet, a little booklet, which will uh, go through some of the basic skills of research writing and the resources which are available for your research. Okay. Uh.
But I, w I would really stress, really emphasize that, 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 that there are people out there to help you. So absolutely do not be hesitant to contact either tutors or study support uh, people in the department. There's a uh, student su doc support at content.ox.ac is um, um, all there to help you and to make it a better experience. Sue, so, have a question. Just a second, when I used to know about history, I got a year ago when I first got set in the industry and then if you go for employment, you come to stuff that way, you think they're training a dry subject, but it shows that they're capable of researching and finding things out, it says so. Um, that's why a lot of people are like sorry that come up from the history background. Yeah. It's just saying you actually think it's less case I'm taking the job, it's completely done. Right. Right. That's it. Okay. Now, um, one, one thing, uh, just to get uh, your opinion on, but when I'm when I'm note taking, mm. say I'm in the library or you know at home, and I'm I'm taking a note from a book. Now there is that theory that they say, oh, just you know, just get the bare bones of what the person means, just write it down yeah. in your own words. Yeah. What I tend to do is I write it down word for word, including all the, all the author's grammar yeah. mistakes yeah. and yeah. things like yeah. that. So that when I come to use that material, I'm not going to accidentally use some of the same phrases <coughs> that the authors use. Okay. And that's my method. Yeah. But I don't know what's your opinion on, on well, that. Um, well, there's that question about you, you've got a book mm -hmm. which someone has written, the extent to which you then go through the laborious process mm -hmm. of taking all the stuff out of that part of the book and putting it into note form mm -hmm. yourself. And mm -hmm. um, I think, and that could be quite intimidating where you think, I've got. Ten books to read for this course, and six months later, I'm only halfway through the first one. Mm -hmm. So, it, academic reading, I would suggest, is a very selective thing mm -hmm. where you use indexes, use chapter headings. So, mm -hmm. I need that chapter, yes, I need that see. section okay. there. But I, then I think you're suggesting that you need to be careful not to just to simply rearticulate what people have written. Yes, yes. And you're suggesting it might creep in. Well, um, it, one thing that you have to be really careful of is, is this sort of demon of plagiarism. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, if you if you um, write down, you don't. For me, if I've read something in a library two years ago and yeah. I find it in my notes and I go, "Oh, that's good," I won't remember what the original phrasing was in in that in those few sentences. So, um, if I write them in in my own words. Maybe two of those words may be the words that were originally used in the sentence. So that's the, that's the thing. So if I write for me, if yeah. I write it down exactly as I've read it in, on that page, yeah. in that paragraph or something, then I know that I'm, when I come to use material from that author, I'm not going to accidentally replicate the same phrasing that he's used. Yeah, uh, there is that point that, that if you are thought to have taken stuff from another source, another writer, um, and just simply... Rewritten it and not put the same Sort of turn, it. yeah, put it into yours and claim it as your own mm -hmm. idea. That mm -hmm. is plagiarism. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you use exactly the same words. But I think you'd have to use a, a, a substantial... If you said uh, the abuse of power or something, mm -hmm. which someone's put in oh, a sentence, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one, no one's going to yeah. pick up on that. No. But if you came up with a whole sentence, it's unlikely you'd do that from memory. No. Which is almost word for word as, as someone else. And you didn't attribute it to that person. Mm -hmm. But the point is with plagiarism, why wouldn't you attribute it? Um, uh, you know, very no, well. that's not what I mean. It, but, but for example, if I'm um, in a library and, I'm, and, I, and I know that I'm not going to have access to that, that same that same book again, yeah. um, I I will I will copy down exactly the bit that you know maybe a few lines on yeah. a paragraph or something like that yeah. that I think is important or something. Yeah. Um, rather than just thinking oh blah, 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 and then just making it up in my own mind, in my own yeah. words, yeah. what that person said, and citing the page reference and so on. Yeah. What I will do is, in my notes, not in the essay, not in, the, not in my thesis, but when I'm writing it, I will, um, I will then know if I'm, it, when I go back to look at those notes, yeah. that, uh, that I'm not accidentally using some of the same phrasing or terminology that, that the person has used. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, fair point. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, that and, I, and I, that works well for me. Yeah. Yeah.
that seems like a yeah, yeah. You know, but I know that a lot of the, the sort of current ideas are, you know, just just yeah, get an idea of what it is that the person's yeah. saying, write it down in your own words. Some some academic terminology is very, very specific for me particularly, <coughs> yeah. but it doesn't mean a normal speech. Yes, exactly, exactly. So if someone has come up with a particular frame, mm. phrase, like conspicuous consumption, that comes from a 19th, 19th 20th century philosophy um, source. Um, and that is specific to that person. He coined the phrase, mm -hmm. and so you should quote that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I hope that's been of some use. Um, I hope that you find the course which you enjoy studying, uh, and then follow a course of study which really enriches your own learning, but also. Just the last word to say, think of learning, studying as another set of skills which you're going to develop. Consciously think, how do I learn? How do I write? How do I research? Uh, what works for me? It's like driving a car. You're learning, if, you, if, you, if it's unfamiliar to you, you're learning a new set of skills, but like driving a car, you get very good at it, hopefully, and um, it will become second nature. Thank you very much. Thank you.